Hello, this is the walkthrough of my granular synthesizer. Uh, this synthesizer works in two different ways. So one is the normal way which can be played with any MIDI keyboard and the other one is by uh, mapping all the different parameters of the synthesizer to a seaboard rise which I have now connected here but I will be using it just a normal as a normal MIDI keyboard for the first part of the walkthrough while I'll be showing all the features of the rolling matrix here uh, in the second part of the walkthrough. So to start with uh, we can see that as I start the duck on we have a sound that we have the reading on the buffer scrolling from left to right so forward from two different sections according to different speeds uh, so the scrub speed which can go forward backwards or just be steady frozen at one point uh, onto the parameters um, the grain distance control the distance between two successive triggering of grains so and it works by having this control here which basically tells the algorithm to pick random value between these two in the in every retriggering of the grain so we can have random values uh, and the retriggering that goes from 8 milliseconds to 36 milliseconds the same supply for the grain length and uh, same applies with the grain pitch so randomly now choosing, choosing between minus 14 and 16 semitones so if I now if I now play simply the sound with a C3 note, we should hear uh, the grains having the normal pitch because they have been read at the normal speed from the buffer. So Every one of this parameter has a linear, which is this black and white representation, and the multi uh, features. So what the multi does is basically he has this control of probabilities. So now in the same range we can pick six different sections to be happening with different probabilities. To show it clearly, I'm going to put like just two sections now. They're mapped according to color, so I'm going to put 50% to this section, 50% to this section, which means that there's a 50% chance of the grain length to be between these two values and a 50% chance to be between these two values with the same grain distance applied. So we can hear that there are both very short grains, or put it even shorter. And longer grains according to this probability, so 50 50 now. Same applies with pitch and grain distance. So if I have, yeah, let's say three of them. Then moving to here, this is the voice envelope for each of the poly instances. So we have a different kind of envelope for the normal envelope and for the release envelope. For uh, each of the grain triggering uh, each of the voices of the granular synthesizer, then we have the normal control on the windows for the grains. Then we have this random pan, which is when it's at one, it means it randomly pans between the left and, and right channel uh, according to the constant power low so you hunt the sound around then there's this grain mode so grain mode what what grain mode once one does is basically reading the the grain forward 
like this, applying the envelope, while which is a normal grain. Grain mode 1 is the same section in a buffer, but it's written in the grain backwards. So from right to left, grain mode 2 read the grain from right to left again, so backwards, but backwards in time as well. With grain mode 3 randomly chosen between, randomly chooses between the three. So, then moving on to the filter section, each grain can have a different cutoff frequency applied to it. So the filter types are the standard low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch, and this control works the same way as it works here, and yes, also the multi control for cutoff or different sections that you've picked. So. <laughs> With the grain cue very high, so high resonance, we can distinctly hear the pitches of the cutoff frequency. And with this in mind, we can also control the cutoff frequency through a keyboard, in this case, this one, with the same probabilistic uh, approach. So we have now a C major chord playing, if we play the note. Through the cutoff frequency of this filter, we can of course change the notes and change the probabilities for every note to be happening and transpose it up or down. We can also control the transposition from the matrix by applying the transposition to the pitch, which works for any MIDI keyboard, and now I'm transposing up and down. By playing different notes on the MIDI keyboard. Uh, we see that when we turn the transposition on here, it been it's been masked masked here to show that it's been controlled by the MIDI keyboard. Then moving to the right, we have the Calpol Strong algorithm, which emulates the behavior of a string, of a tuned string. And this allows for the tuning of the individual grains to different pitches and allows for more pitched material to be happening from the grains even when they are not pitched for example uh, when it's a drum loop or any kind of percussive sounds and the way that this works is through this dry wet control yeah feedback then there's the option to dampen the string so to basically puts a low pass filter in the in the feedback uh, of the delay and it's be, it can be tuned differently for left and right channel and the way that it's now working here is the same with the cutoff transposition so it's been transposed up and down from the left and right channel the same way according to the MIDI notes I'm playing on the keyboard. If I turn this MIDI to pitch off also I can turn off the options for the MIDI keyboard to be controlling the reading speed of the grain so they all sound the same whatever pitch I'm playing on the keyboard but I'm tuning it according to the Carlos Strong algorithm so the grain remains the same pitch but it's been tuned to the Carlos Strong turning the filter off makes it a little bit more obvious sorry well, we can transpose left and channel differently to have different effects. And also transpose them up or down through intervals. So this is it's maintaining the same interval as I play the MIDI keyboard. The tune possibilities the tunes the screen the the string according to a frequency so in a range is expressed in MIDI notes. The same uh, cutoff keyboard control applies also to the filter. So if I just turn the detune off, 
Now each grain will be picking a different values according to, prob to, the, to this probability, so 16% now for every one of them. Uh, it's picking a different value between this C major chord, for example, it can of course be changed to be whatever, with different probabilities, of course. And the way that now works is also being transposed up and down according to the MIDI keyboard. Well, the weird sounding envelope was because it was a weird sounding voice envelope that I had here. So now it should be more standard fade in and fade out. Sorry for that. Um, yeah, the damping, if I have very low damping, the string is more free and then it sounds more stringy. If I dump it down, it dampens the result. And we can play different chords and different properties. output there's a stereo delay with uh, stereo distorted delay which adds a little bit more of depth to the results so uh, oh also the kind of rand randomized control randomized uh, approach with probabilities applies also on the reading positions on the buffer. So now I have, for example, let's say 66% of the reading to be happening here, 16 here, and 16 here. This creates kind of interesting effects because it's, it can be, uh, it allows for a little bit more of control on the reading positions. If I turn it on, I need to pitch, I can control the pitch and the reading speed of the brain through the keyboard. So, Since the algorithm is built in Gen and I have sample accuracy, I can have kind of linear kind of effects. So if I have the distance to be very short and repeating, and then I have a set length, I can create this kind of waveforms because, like, literally, literally, the retriggering is happening. is happening with sample accuracy. And it's been retributing also that time. And with more length, I, I jump, I'm just adding overlap to this retriggering according to the ratio between the two. So if I have 34, which is the double of 17, I have pretty much, I should be having two grains triggering. As I can see here, because they have been retriggered every 17 milliseconds, but their length is 34. This creates very nice effects when the couple stop algorithm is added. Also now moving to the rolly uh, aspect of the sound. So 
now I'm controlling, I have the five dimensions of the row lead to be controlling every one of the parameters. So now I'm controlling the y, with the y position, the length of the grain. So if I can show here, that there would be a mast here, let me just turn everything dry wet down. I can show here, if I have the position of the finger down, I have very short grains. If I turn it up, it increase the length. And it's polyphonic, and each voice has its own control. And they, I can, of course, control any of the parameters with any of the dimensions. So now I'm going to control the cutoff of the filter with the aftertouch, for example. Let's say it to be going the range of 1000 hertz to 5000. If I turn it on, now I'm controlling with the aftertouch the cutoff filter. Oh, it's band pass, so it's a little bit less obvious with the low pass, it's more obvious. And every parameter can be controlled by any of the dimensions. So what this link does is basically links the low boundary and the high boundary. So the way the algorithm works in the granular engine is that there, every parameter is controlled by two boundaries in which between which random values are picked. So if I link them, I just have one value instead of two because both the low boundary and high boundary overlap and they are the same value. If I delink them and I turn it on, I can have different values for both of them. So if I put 100 to 500, for example, it means that by the aftertouch position, the low boundary goes from a minimum of 100 to a maximum of 500. And for example, yeah, I can keep it this way. And the high boundary goes from a minimum of 1,000 to a maximum of 5,000. So it would be picking at the lowest position random values between these two, at the highest position uh, the a random value between these two, and in between random values between the two values that are being played. <laughs> And of course, the wide dimension of the sound still applies. And what else? So, I think I've said everything. So, everything can be combined in the role of matrix also. Yeah, one last thing is that everything can be combined. So, now pitch is controlled, also the cutoff. And as long as that between these two random values. So what happens is that at the output of all of this, all the values go into the same parameter are summed and then clipped. So to control, to give with, so it gives the possibility with a little bit of tweaking of the uh, ratings here of the scales, it gives a little bit more control on every aspect of the sound with different kind of complex routings, pretty much. Just remember to have uh, a sensible scaling to all of them. So there's also possibility to save and load presets for the matrix. Uh, this is the standard one. Um, I think I've said pretty much everything about this. So uh, anything of this can be applied to have complex routing. So having very complex stuff going on and then controlling some other stuff with a rolly can give a little bit of depth to the sound. Uh, well, I think I've said everything. Thank you for listening.